make glass, stitch it on deck. Morning, conducts. Good morning, sir. Morning, conducts. Good morning, sir. Conducts, orders to the century. Go, sir. The first order to the century is take charge of this most and all government property in view, sir. Sir, the second order to the century is walk my post in the military manner, keeping all of us on the work, preserving everything that takes place in the military, sir. Sir, the third order to the century is report all violations of orders I'm instructed to enforce, sir. Sir, the fourth order to the century is. We all calls to post more discipline to our house and coordinate in our own, sir. Sir, the fifth order to the century is, quit my post on the property and leave, sir. Sir, the sixth order to the century is, receive, obey, and pass on to the century who leaves me. All orders from the main officer, the main duty officer, officer of the day, officer of the day, and all officers and the main officers on the watch on me, sir. Sir, the seventh order to the century is, talk to no one except the line of duty, sir. Sir, the eighth order to the century is, Give the alarm in case of fire and storm, sir. Sir, the ninth order to the century is call the court for a guard or officer of the day in any case of not covered by instructions, sir. Sir, the tenth order to the century is school to all officers and all colors to stand as my case, sir. Sir, the eleventh order to the century is be especially watched for a night and during the time of challenging. Challenge all persons on and near my post and allow no one to pass without proper authority, sir. Connects turn. You're now sitting at a position of attention, hands to your side, heels together, sitting erect, chin up, eyes forward, military bearing. The class day begins with self-discipline, military bearing. At ease. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Good morning, sir. Happy Thursday to you. Um, just give you a real quick review of what's going to happen here in class today. You know that this is our block schedule. So, we got a lot of time here today. First part of the class, we'll be doing academics, where we will move on to chapter number three. Remember, in chapter number two, we covered what? Raise your hand for me, please. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Carson. Officer and chief for cadets and what other branch? What other section? U.S. Navy. U.S. Navy, correct. We learned about cadets, officers, and enlisted rankings. And we learned about active duty Navy officer and enlisted rankings. Are they pretty similar? Yes, sir. All right, you can speak up. It's okay. The camera's not going to bite you. I won't bite you either. Maybe, maybe not. All right, so what I want you to understand, though, is some of the things you've already learned in Chapter 2 earlier. And by the way, I'll pass out those test results later on in the class. But as we identify some of the new things in Chapter number 3, I'll be periodically asking you questions about ranks and race identification because it really does make a difference, okay? We'll talk more about that. Now, chapter number three, go ahead and get your orange books. On top of your desk, please, chapter three. That should be on page three dash one. Three dash one. In this chapter, ladies and gentlemen, in this unit, we will cover military customs, it's up here on the board, military customs, Courtesies, etiquette, and ceremonies. That's a mouthful. What do you think? That's a whole lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Well, when you boil it all down into one thing, it already, you know, it really, what it means is the way the military runs itself. See, everything in life kind of sort of has their own little traditions, even your family. Don't you agree? Yes, sir. Over the Thanksgiving holidays, there's certain things that you're accustomed to that becomes a habit, routine. Eventually, put the big word called Tradition. Do you agree? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, well, that's the same thing that happens in the United States Navy. Remember, the most powerful Navy in the world, right? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Now, let me ask you a real quick question, because I talk a lot of history when it comes to, you know, ceremonies, because that's where it comes from, our history. Let me ask you this. Before America created its first Navy, what do you think those sailors really came from? Did they just pop up and grow up and they became a wannabe sailor? Or did they come from another military branch already, another organization? Think about your history. Who was in charge of us before we had the Civil War? The British. The British. So where do you think our Navy history came from? The That's correct. Most of our naval traditions, even to this day, comes from the English Navy, the Brits. Okay? So as we go through and we talk about a lot of things, they did, they did not just start with America. Okay? They started 
even beyond that, and we brought those traditions over. So a lot of things you do here in the classroom, a lot of things that you do at your home, that your parents share with you now, you'll be doing the same things probably with your loved ones and your families as you create them in your future. So my point is make the best of it and always try to improve. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Outstanding. All right, so the other thing we want to mention here is your objective here in this chapter. You're going to be able to write or orally explain to me a presentation of the topic, we're going to check customs, courtesy, etiquette, and ceremonies. Most likely it'll be a written test, like we normally do here. All right? You should be able to, you're expected to demonstrate knowledge of and respect for the responsibilities of loyal citizens in a democratic society. We'll talk more about that. You should be expected to explain the types of military customs and courtesies to include their purpose and when courtesies are rendered. See, in other words, there's a lot of different customs but you got to know when they, when you expect to execute them. We'll talk about ships and how they execute different levels of respect and traditions. Okay, I'll talk about that here, you know, momentarily. And you also have a lot of traditions on shore duty. You also have a lot of traditions right here in the ROTC program. Before I do that, let me go ahead and get the must report. Please stand at attention. And I call upon your name, please. Cadet Baker. Here, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Battle. Here, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Bridges. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Carter J. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Carter the fourth. Not here. Cadet Cook. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Coward. Cadet McNeil. Yes, sir. Thank you. Cadet Melvin. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Pickering. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Cadet Pierce. Pierre. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Get enough water, ma'am? You good? Yes, sir. Excellent. Cadet Roberts. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Cadet Russell. Here, sir. Thank you, madam. Cadet Scott A. Here, sir. Thank you, sir. Cadet Scott L. Here, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Settles. Here, sir. Thank you, sir. Cadet Stroud. Thank you, ma'am. You all right over there, Miss Stroud? Cadet Wiggins. Here, sir. Thank you, sir. Outstanding. Now, what I'm going to pass out to you now, with the assistance of my upper class, come on up, sir. Ma'am, today, remember, here's a, sim <clears throat> here's a symbol. This is the forward part of the ship. That is the after part of the ship. We're on the ship together. On the left side of the ship, can anybody raise your hand and tell me what do we call this nautical term for the left side of the ship? Yes, ma'am. Wrong, ma'am. Four letters. Starts with the letter P. Yes, sir. Four Port side is correct. This side is the port side. You want to guess what side of the ship is this? On the right? Yes, sir, Mr. Sellers. Starboard side. The starboard side. That is correct. So you're today known as the port side team. You're known as the starboard side team. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Pass it out to the port side, sir. And as a supply officer, I'd like for you to pass it out to the starboard side. This is your worksheet for chapter number three. We're not going to go verbatim off of these sheets today, but after I complete my lecture, you'll be required to complete that, and we'll break down the small teams, and you'll be able to do it collectively as a small group. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Again, make sure your books are open to page 3-1, worksheets on top, take your writing utensils, and document on the top your last name, first name. Today's date is December the... You sure about that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Tomorrow means my oldest son's birthday. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm in the right mood to buy him a gift. <laughs> Did, I don't want to know about that, son. Did I ask you? Another Sagittarius. Is that what you're trying to tell me, son? That's why we got these for coming. Bucking heads, that's what it is? All right. Okay, who else need a worksheet? Everybody's good? All right, let's go ahead and get started here. There's no talking in my class unless you're speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Chapter number three. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right. Up here in the overhead projector here, we'll start chapter number three. <sighs> 
sit at my desk and click. Come on over here, cook. Do my clicking for the day. I'll get it all set up for you. Hit the light, Senior Chief. Not yet, please. Okay, you see this button right here? You just click that when I ask you to. All right, again, military customs, courtesies, etiquette, and ceremony. Let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and click it for me, please. All right, anybody take a guess and tell me what you see up here on this photo? Take your time. Tell me what you see. Raise your hand when you get it. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. It is a ceremony. What type of ceremony? Anyone take a stab at it? Look at it. Observe. Now remember chapter two. What did you learn in chapter two? How to identify a pay grade, correct? What do you see up here? Anything special? Promotion? Is it a promotion? Uh, maybe not. Promotions, get everybody to be in formation, going from one person to the next, just like you are doing personnel inspection. So this is not a setting for promotion. Yes, sir, Mr. Wiggins? Officer? Who's the officer? The one in the middle? That is correct. Let's see how really good you are. What level, what pay grade do you think this person is? From a distance, what would you what would you say? Is it an instant? Yes or no? Is it a captain? Is it an admiral? Why do you think it's an admiral? No, you can't guess what pay grade it is. Just because they're an average doesn't mean that's the, that's the special person that arrives. No, no, no. That's something you should physically identify on this person right here and tell you if it's an admiral, a star, one star and above. What do you think, Roberts? Three ways of identification, name them. Four ways, yes. The cover, the call device, the arm sleeve, if they have a jacket on, and what is the other one? The bars, the shoulder bars, right? What do you see right here? This is what we call a choker white uniform, or E7 and above. What's on here that you can identify from a distance? And believe me, they make these things so you can't identify immediately from a distance. You already know, because the gold scrambled eggs on the bed of its combination cover, that it's at least, the scrambled eggs mean it's at least in 06 and above. Number two, what are these? What? What are these? Shoulder boards, ladies and gentlemen. And since they're all color of what? Gold, that means an admiral. That means a rear admiral, lower half, that's 07 and above. Yes, you can't identify what the stars look like, but you can identify that it's in some type of admiral. Do you agree? Yes, sir. All right, so that's the big dog. Let's keep it real. All right? Remember, on board that ship, that they're stepping on board, traditionally, you can be an 05 and above. Now you're talking about a big dog, at least 07 and above. So, anybody describe me what are these three people that are saluting on the side? Who are they? Anybody know? Take a guess. Who's been here for a minute and seen the annual military inspection that we all are part of? We have one coming up, February the 13th. And you're going to see this right here. This setting right here. No guesses? These are what we call side boys. They stand on the side. They create an entry for the distinguished guest. Let's go ahead and read. Customs and courtesies are the way by which nations, nations, and individuals pay respect to distinguished persons, distinguished persons, ladies and gentlemen, and foreign governments. My point is real simple. When we conduct our annual military inspection, the AMI here in February, we're going to have a lot of distinguished people to come here. The principal, okay, the superintendent of education here in the county, the mayor of the city, and any other special guests like Commander Hibbert, our Area 12 manager that supervises all the programs in the state of Georgia and, and Florida. All those are distinguished, important people, okay? It could be a civilian or it could be military, if I understand that, right? So one of the traditional ways here is when we, what we, we do what we call ringing them aboard or gonging them aboard the command. 
So what you're gonna see is when we stand in the gymnasium, like a door entry, we're gonna basically have side boys. And the, the number of side boys is based on your rank. Okay? 05 and above, I mean 06 and above, they get six. 05 and below, they get four. So this person will step out. This person will step out. You only get one, two, and three, four. We do them one at a time. Now, can anybody guess and tell me who is this person right here? Saluting with the left hand. Who is this person? Take a guess. Five, four, three, two, one. Done. You don't know? This is a bosun's mate. Okay, traditionally the bosun mates have what we call a bosun's pipe. Take a look at his right hand. He's holding a pipe. That's why he's saluting with his left hand because he's executing some type of equipment with his right hand. An example, he's standing at attention, he has the bosun pipe, right hand, saluting with the left hand, which is unordinary. Do you agree? Yes, but he's doing that because he's doing two things at one time. So he's executing. Now, what happens is this. They have a little bell. And based on your rank, it's the amount of bells that you get. And they're always even numbers. They're never an odd number except when they're on board. Let me give you an example. This apple right here would probably rank the same number of sideboards. Six people, six bells. Got it? So this is how it would sound. It would say, ding, 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 ding. You notice they have multiples of two, correct? And they were total how many? Six. Six, which equals the same number of what? Sideboards. Sideboards. Okay, you got that down. So if I'm somewhere on the ship and I hear six bells, that tells me it's an 06 or above coming on board our ship. Do you understand the meaning? Yes. Just to notify everyone at the command over the intercom system, six bells. That tells you the rank. All right, the next thing is they will give the verbal title of that person. Okay, they would probably say, uh, Commander, United States Navy, arriving. Or if, a, if an officer was in charge of a ship, and the name of the ship was the Eisenhower, they would say, ding, 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 Eisenhower, or Eisenhower, arriving. And then once this person enters the side boys, the bosun mate will start with, a verb, with that pipe and start blowing it. Once the very first sound starts, all six side boys will go from attention to hand salute. Okay, and they will continue to hold up their salute, and then this person in the middle that we're saluting will return a salute to us, and they will walk through the threshold, basically. Similar to this passageway right here. Okay, imagine that all four of you, all eight of you were side boys facing the middle, okay, and the person would basically just walk through walk through, and at the end, the bosun mate would end this, end the bosun mate call, and then this person would bring their salute down, and they would go ahead and take a seat into the st onto the stage or wherever the setting is for the ceremony. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. The only time we do this is there's a ceremony taking place. Now, if he just come for a regular visit to talk to his, talk to the captain of the ship, because the captain works for him, we don't do all these big pomp and circumstances. We don't do all this stuff right here. This is normally done for if they're doing a chain change of command. In other words, you got one captain coming to take over the ship, and you got another person about to leave the ship. They call that a change of command. Everybody with me so far? Yes, yes sir. And all the big dignitaries, the big wigs come over there and witness that because that's a big, big to do. You would never have more responsibility than a captain in the United States Navy that's in charge of a ship or a submarine. I promise you that. They got authority like the law. They're like the mayor. They're like the plumbers. They're like everything all wrapped into one, and they are held accountable to the highest of standards. And they can get relieved for the most minor thing. So to even get an opportunity to be a commanding officer of a ship is an outstanding opportunity. But to keep it is even harder. So when you look at your senior naval science instructor, our 06 Captain Seal next door, you got to understand that that man has been ran through the ringer big time by his bosses up in D.C. And they have put the magnifying glass on him thoroughly. Okay, and he's went through all the little pump and circumstances. He's been through all the little minor and major events, and he survived. 
So you got to understand the respect that comes with that. That's why even though we're retired instructors, you still see me giving much respect to that position that he earned. Do you agree? Yes, sir. You never see me addressing him other than yes, sir, and no, sir. I could call him by his first name. Hey, bud. I choose to respect what he earned. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And that's what I want you to understand. As you move up in this program, as you earn your promotions, you need to start showing more respect because it's not given. It's earned. Okay. So, back to the ceremony thing here. What I brought to you today, anybody guess what this is? Yeah. This is a bosun mace pipe. Anybody know what job I had in the real name? I was not always an instructor. I was a bosun mate. I started out with this guy right here. That's my job. Primary job in the Navy was a bosun mate. So I did a lot of ceremonies like this. And at the annual military inspection in February, you'll see me standing out there with sideboards, and I'll do the bosun mate pipe calling there as well. Anybody interested in hearing how this loud thing sounds? Yes, sir. Okay, it's been a minute, so bear with me. Okay. It's pretty loud. So ding, 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 and you hear a loud sound saying, and then that person is going to take a seat. These people bring their salutes down, and then the next person. We'll do that. We're we'll going them on. Ding, 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 ding. Captain, United States Navy, arriving. And then we'll blow the pipe again for them to walk through. Okay? So, normally, I like to have NS1s like yourself, Naval Science First Year Cadets, to be my side boys or side person, whatever you want to call it. All right? Gender neutral. And uh, so if you're interested in volunteering at the annual military inspection, you know, let me know. Only the sharp ones, only the uniform, square away type folks would be the one with the good military band. Because front stage, everyone is looking at you at the beginning of the ceremony. Any questions on this? No, sir. So this is one of our traditions right here. All right? Next one, please. All right. They are not rendered to governments that the U.S. does not recognize or to officials who request that they not be rendered. Okay, what that really means is, let's say we're overseas somewhere and we pulled into port. All right, we got a ceremony going on, so we invite some of the important dignitaries. If they tell us, hey, listen, I ain't I'm not standing up there showing no respect to your American flag, well, guess what? We don't want you there either. And you're not going to come and disrespect our flag, and we're not going to raise our flag or lower our flag beyond any other flag in the world. So if you can't deal with that, we're not going to render you or your government that type of respect. So that's why they do a lot of communication before any ceremony, so there's no misunderstanding or misinterpretation. We have public affairs officers that do all the arrangements for any type of event. So what you need to understand is if you're overseas and we don't, you know, and if we got hostile issues with a country, we're not going to invite the dignitaries there anyway. Or we're not going to render honors to their particular flag or seal or whatever it may be. That's all it really means. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Any questions? Yes, sir. No, sir. All right. Next one, please. All right. Now, I want you to turn the lights off for me, please. Hit the lights. Get your focus. Get your focus. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to take a look at this picture closely. Then I want you to raise your hand and tell me really what you see in that photo. Ms. Russell? Is it a submarine? No, ma'am. Mr. Roberts. Sunken ship. A sunken ship. Could it be? Who agrees with that? Any other guesses, Mr. Mr. Scott? Sir, I, I know. What is it, Mr. Scott? It's a sunken ship on Pearl Harbor. Okay. Anyone agree with that? Robert, you agree? Women, you agree? Anyone else got anything you want to add? What are they seeing here? Give me some some uh, specifics. Wiggins, what do you see? The, um, the ship that's on, on the other side from the second ship is um, coming down there, I guess. Um, rescue? Yeah, that ship. You think it's coming to rescue? Rescue. Okay, any other feedback? What, what do you see, Melvin? People getting on the ship. People getting on the ship? 
I see that. Do I see a sunken ship? I see that. You see a flag? Does that flag tell you anything? What it might tell you? What does the flag then tell you? Yes. Something happened there? Maybe. Wiggins? It's the United States what? Ship? Hmm, could be. Let me tell you what this really is. This is a ferry boat with hundreds of people. This right here is a pier that the ferry boat is tied up to. Underneath here, the silhouette that you see, that is a sunken ship. Anybody know the name of it? The USS Arizona is correct. Can anybody tell me the location of this place right here in the world? Yes, Mr. Pickering? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Where is Pearl Harbor located? Mr. Hawaii. Scott? Hawaii is correct. It's one particular port in Waikiki area, right next to Waikiki. All right, this is Pearl Harbor. Let's talk history now, ladies and gentlemen, because remember, our courtesies, our ceremonies come from our history. So we got to know about our history when it comes to Navy. That's what you're learning here. That's why we call it Naval Science. You're to discover your history, okay, and where we're moving toward. So, with that said, what happened here at Pearl Harbor, historically? Anyone? Baker? Japanese attack. Japanese attack, that is correct. The Japanese attack is on what day? Anyone? Robert? No, sir. This is relevant. We're in that time frame right now. I just gave you a hint. What day will live in infamy? Pickering? That is correct. December the 7th. Anybody know what year? 19. I gave you that. 40. Scott? 1942. That is correct, sir. Okay. That right there is very important because it pulled us into what? World War II. World War II. We had to respond. Here's the scenario, ladies and gentlemen. This was a Sunday. A Sunday. What do we do on Sundays, ladies and gentlemen? Go to church, go out on a picnic. Come on, we're talking about Hawaii. It's December. Everybody in America, that, you know, there are 48 states. Now, you know, except Hawaii and Alaska, those 48 states probably freezing around December the 7th. So the most best place in the, you know, in our country that you can be at is in Pearl Harbor. Don't you agree? Yes, sir. So everybody's headed to the beach. Going out and getting their little surf on, or going to the mall, or going to hang out with the friends and family. Everybody doing everything except thinking about the enemy. But guess what? The enemy knew. What's the key thing when you're going to attack someone? Is the element of what? Surprise. There you go. And that's what happened to us. We had our guard down. Okay, we were not prepared. And it was during what season of the year? Christmas. Aren't we getting ready right now mentally, emotionally, financially? Aren't we getting ready for the holidays? Yes. We think about what we're going to buy mama, what mama going to buy us, what Santa Claus going to bring. Some of y'all ain't getting nothing. <laughs> but the big deal was we were, you know, we had no idea that this was going to happen. Okay? Yes, sir. That's correct. We're not an offensive weapon. We are defensive. We are set up as a defense. Yes. Now we do have a lot of technical, you know, technical surveillance and all that kind of stuff going on to, you know, to keep us abreast of what's going on, keep us ahead of everybody. But no, we don't attack. You know, we <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. We don't go on the offense. Uh, we try to avoid that. Okay. Now the reason I bring up this right here, and I'll continue to explain to you, this little white piece right here is an open to the air memorial. Inside these walls, on the inside, as you get off the boat and go inside the memorial, is a listing of names of everyone that deceased on that day. What president said this is a day that will live in infamy? Who was the president during that time? Think about it. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Pierre? Kennedy. Kennedy. 
No, man, you're 20 years old. It was Roosevelt, it's correct. Okay? President Roosevelt made that statement to the American people that day. And then what day did we declare war on Japan? Think about it. Cook, any idea? This happened on December the 7th. What day did we declare war on, J on Japanese? The 8th is correct. The very next day, he took it to the people and he declared war. Who was our ally with us that declared war with us against the Japanese? No. Hickory? The British. The British. Now, that's pretty ironic. We broke away from the British to create our own Navy. Now, here it is in World War II. Somebody just destroyed our Navy, and now they're coming to our assistance as our ally. And they're going to fight that battle with us, and we lost many people. World War II was known as the most giving generation historically. Ladies and gentlemen, understand that America had to change its mindset. Let me give you an example. Over here, around the corner, here's Toys R Us factory over there that you drive by. Correct? Yes, sir. They had to turn plants like that into plants that build tanks, aircraft, pots, pans, anything that it took to defend or create a war machine. We had to build this stuff quickly and ship it overseas, and the draft was implemented as well into our country. In other words, most of all the males that was of age was drafted into the Army or the, or the Air Force. They were both together at the same time. You know, in other words, the Air Force and the Army were still one unit at that time. Okay? But a big draft was going on. So who the heck stayed back in America and ran all these factories that we needed to build up these surplus of weapons and, and material and equipment and food packaged properly to keep that machine rolling overseas. Who do you think stood back here and took care of business? Mr. Sellers? The women. Women, you got to understand, you held down the home, literally, and you held down this country. My point of bringing all this up is to make sure you understand something. It doesn't matter if you go and physically fight a battle in a war, or if you're out there right now as we speak, literally fighting someone, that doesn't really matter. It's about the system that it requires to put everything in place. You can't build a car with a battery. You gotta have other companies, I mean multi-companies, building different parts, shipping them to the factory, and then the people on the assembly line assembling in the pre precise manner that the, that the engineers created it to be. And then you have at the end of the assembly line a brand new spanking, beautifully shined car, end product. That's what we had to create as a nation. The nation came together. That's why it's known as one of the most powerful things that Americans did. That's why it's the most respected generation historically, because the country had to modify itself. It had to change to survive. We were attacked. And then overseas in Europe, another war was you know, going on, another part of the World War II was going on, and Germany sucked us in to another part of the, uh, the war that we had to, uh, to fight. So there were two battlefronts, one in Europe and one in the Western Pacific Islands against the Japanese. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. All right, so you got the ceremonial. What I want to pick, point out to you, though, is this flag right here, that beautiful flag. That beautiful flag right there flying. This right now is known as a memorial, so it's like a government installation now. It still represents this ship that has sunk. As a matter of fact, I've been to this place at least three times. I've been to a Waikiki area at least nine times. And you can stand right here and see oil still leaking out this ship. That's a long time ago. We're talking almost 60 plus years. And it still has life in it. And the bodies that went down on this ship, this battleship, one of the most powerful ships in the world, they're still down there. So this is a living museum. I want you to understand that. Yes, ma'am. How did the ship stay so close to the What happened was this ship was actually tied to this pier right here. And right behind it is Forward Island. 
okay? So that's why it's still something right there. And plus, when you import, the water is not that deep. So it was probably only about 30 feet deep, and it sat right down. It just basically covered the top of the ship. It's not going anywhere. You might have currents and stuff like that going, but they've gone down there and put cement blocks on it so it doesn't shift or move. You got it? So it won't move. Yes? Was, that, was the pier bigger than that? Like the yes. That's just only one pillar of the uh, pier that remains. Yes, sir. And there's wood underneath it, so it, it corrodes, and, it, and uh, they just went in and took it off. But they went and cemented this one. And, and update it so it can at least hold the memorial in place. But the ship itself is cement. Any other questions on that? Now, I speak about this flag right here because it's one of the ceremonies. When ships come into Pearl Harbor, they have to pass by this memorial. See, one thing about the Navy, we render honors to each ship in passing. And it's based on Who's the higher rank? For an example, if this row was a ship coming this way, no, going that way, and this row right here was a ship, and you're going to cross each other like this, and you can actually see each other, this is what happens. The people on board have to figure out real quickly who's the senior person. Because the senior person, or the junior person, excuse me, is going to have to start or initiate rendering honors, you know, saluting, right? Because they're all officers in charge of these ships. So even though, you, you know, they can't physically say, hey, George, you know, but their ships can say, hey, George, and this is how we do it. Okay? You're the ship, and let's, let, let's pretend I'm you, and we're going to pass each other. Let's say I'm the junior ship, okay? So many feet away from bow to bow, or front of the ship to front of the ship, so many yards away from each other, I'm going to bring everybody on my port side, which is this side, I'm going to bring, because we're going to have a port to port passing. Your port and my port. That's the left side. We're going to cross port to port side. Did you see what I'm saying? Okay. So now everybody that's on top of the ship, we call it top side, we're going to bring everybody on the, on the, on the announcement system we're going to bring them all to attention on the port side. So we can salute, literally salute each other as we pass each other. So, since port side is a, all, I mean, is a, you know, the, the, uh, the left hand side, see, starboard is one that starts with odd numbers, port side is even numbers. So, what they're going to do is they're going to blow two whistles. Beep, beep, that means everybody top side coming to attention on the port side. We still get closer, okay? We still get closer. Then they're going to give one signal or one whistle for hand salute. B. And your ship is going to do the same thing, but they're going to do it only after the junior ship starts it out. Just like a hand salute to an officer, you got to initiate it as a junior person, and then the senior person returns it. Then the senior person bring it down, then the junior person can bring it down. That's the sequence. Remember that? Okay, the same thing with this ceremony right here, this tradition of saluting United States ships, USS ships. Okay? So we'll continue down. Everybody saluting. You guys are saluting too. Your, your, your command brought you to attention to the port as well. Okay? And then once we pass, once we pass, they'll say, beep, beep, remember, carry on, or excuse me, ready to. That's why they give you two whistles. Beep, beep, you bring it down. And then they'll give you three whistles. B, B, B. That means carry on. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. All right, so that's how that sequence works. Now, since we still look at the USS Arizona as a commissioned ship, even though it can't do anything, even though theoretically it's a memorial now, we still treat it like it's an active duty commissioned U.S. Navy ship. You get it? So when we pass by here, even though they can't return their the whistles and all that kind of good stuff, you know they can't return the salute. The ships salute it. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma because, okay, the question is, how do I know what ship initiate, who's senior, who's junior? What it is, your, I'll say your, your quartermasters, those are the navigators on board the ship. They're up on the bridge 24 hours a day. They're the ones that are doing all the navigational stuff with the radars and stuff to get you in and out of port safely without running aground or without hitting someone, okay? They're the ones that have 
access to the information of who's in charge of what ship. There's messages come out every day to update those if it changes. And it tells them what day those officers got promoted on. Okay? Sometimes it could be the same pay grade. But I got promoted or I got paid two months before you did, so I'm seeing it to you. That's how it works. So they give them a number, okay? And that number signifies, you know, how much rank they have. And you can simply do the math. You know what your captain status is, and then you know what that captain status is, and common sense tell you who's senior and who's junior. And the, every ship got the same book. So everybody can know the same information. Any questions? All right, cool. But you got to know that kind of stuff, though. All right, it serves a purpose. And see, if it was just a human being, all I got to do is look at your insignias. And I can automatically know if I'm senior or junior to you. Do you agree? All right, that's why we have this identification stuff. It's to help you identify that because of our traditions. Okay? All right. Go on, move on to the next. Any other questions about this? No, sir. All right, cool. Now, the American flag and flag etiquette. Now we're going to talk about the flag. This is the second half of our study today, and we'll be done. Now, the flag. Everybody got their own opinions about what they think about the flag. Take that light for me, please, Mel. Everybody. Some people really believe in the flag. Some people don't care about it. Some people don't know about it. This is a beautiful thing right here. Anybody tell me what the red represents? Raise your hand. What you think? Scott? Um, blood that was shed with your soldiers. That's it. What about the blue? Her. Huh? Her. No. Anyone? The blue? Why do we have stars? Well, yeah, they represent the states. The blue represents the <laughs> Why is that ball eagle there? Why is that part of our symbol? Nobody ever thought about that, huh? What about this bird soars in North America? It's one of the most powerful animals, elite animals there is. You know, independent, soars above every other animal. All that stuff. Symbolic. What do you think? That flag is a symbol. Okay? Reminds us of greatness. Greatness of America. Listen, you're in this program because you believe in this country. Okay? Doesn't mean that you know everything about this country. You'll learn a whole lot in this program, more than the average student will. But pride and dignity is important. Okay? That's why we do have heritage that are positive and you know and motivating. Okay? But this flag, some might spit on it, some might even burn it, some might curse on it. But I stand for it because it's a symbol. It's a symbol for the freedom of this nation. Real simple. Real self. The reason that you're sitting in these chairs right now today is because of the people that sacrificed for you. People that you'll never know. You'll never know their names. Okay? That's what we do as Americans. We step it up. Yes, ma'am. Somebody, yeah, we're going to get to that. The reason that people say those things is because now you just disgraced a symbol. Okay? You don't idolize it but it represents something special. You get the difference? Okay, and there's a distinguished way to destroy something, and there's a negative way. You see on TV a lot of other countries, yeah, down with America, all that good stuff. Hey, good, good for you. If burning that flag means that much to you, good luck, have at it, you know? But think about this, every time you go to a game, every time you see something on television, we're always doing what? Oh, yeah, we say the players, or we listen to what? The national anthem. And they're always looking at what symbol? Why do we do that? Respect what? The country. But it's the, ultimately what we're trying to do. Yeah, we're going to respect the country, but ultimately we're bringing our people together. Let's keep it simple. All right? It's unification. We're unifying and identifying what we all stand for together, collectively. Because if you don't know what you're standing for, you'll fall for anything. You get what I'm saying? I mean, think about it. Even these negative gangs out here in some of these other cities, they all got their own little rag or some symbol, don't they? I mean, that's what everybody wants, something to connect with. And this simply is our connection piece. 
It's called the American flag. Any questions on that? Okay, next please. The American flag, the standard. It's the simple standard. It's the start and the end. It's the standard of honor under which we live. Next please. Now, I didn't go to work for 22 and a half years for a freaking material flag. I went and served based on what the flag represents. You understand the difference, what I'm trying to say? Okay, I can go buy a flag for $55. Beautiful when they hang it outside my door and be done with it and say, yeah, 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 I'm patriotic. Go for it. You know, anybody can do that. But actually stepping up and doing your thing, just like you, you're wearing a uniform. A lot of, a lot of people out here, outside these doors, are not willing to commit like you are. So we both have a lot in common. We both above the fray. We both willing to get that extra and walk the walk instead of just running our mouths that you see every day. Now everybody can't serve, but you can give and you can respect. You understand what I'm saying? Up here, what do we see? Who the heck is these folks standing up here? It's Pierre. Color guard. Color guard. What? Color guard. What? What do we? What's the proper name for it? Anyone? Raise your hand. Roberts, you drill team. What is it? It's going to go ahead and detail. Okay? That's the proper name for it. It's a detail. All right? Color guard team, color guard detail. I'll go for all of that. What do we see in these four people? Name them. Anybody know what they're holding in their hands? What are they doing? What's their purpose? Yes, ma'am. Flag holders. How about flag bearers? Okay, that's the proper name. They're bearers. Okay, they're holding the flag. What two flags do you see here? Miss Russell? The U.S. Navy flag. You sure about that? No, nah, really? <laughs> what do you see, Scott? It is a U.S. Navy flag, Miss Russell. <laughs> and what else? The American flag. The American flag. Question. Which one is more senior or superior than the other. Ms. Pierre? The U.S. flag. No other flag will ever fly higher in elevation when side by side to the American flag. For an example, this color guard detail. Before you start the national anthem or the American, you know, Pledge of Allegiance, we always do what to the Navy flags or any other flag other than the American flag? What do we do to it? Pickering? Tilted. Tilted? That's what we call it. No. What do we call it, Roberts? Drilled man. <laughs> what? We call it dipping. Okay? You dip the flag. That means ultimately what you're doing is right now they're even. Do you agree? Yes. But before we start the pledge, we will dip every flag except the American flag. The American flag will always stay erect, straight up and down vertical. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Because it will be the highest elevated flag because that's our symbol. Every other flag will take a bow, take a dip. It will be lowered during the pledge on the national anthem. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. And at the conclusion of that, then you'll raise the flags back up evenly, and then they'll proceed to exit. Any questions on this? Who are these folks right here? Matter of fact, let's go back to chapter 2. What do we see on top of the heads? What type of covers are those? Combination covers. What are those chin straps? What colors are they? What does gold mean? Officers. What does black chin straps mean? What? It means enlisted. It could be any pay grade. Remember, the only way you can ever wear this service double breast, service dress blue uniform is that you're on the color guard detail, correct? All right, well, what I mean is if you're E6 and below, the only way you will wear this uniform is that you're on this team. Okay, everybody with me? Yes, sir. All right. Any questions about this? When do we see this type of event take place? Mr. Roberts? Football game. Football. Inside of a gym there, huh? Basketball. Assembly. All type of events, yes? Yes. All right, cool. 
The flag signifies a people dedicated to liberty, justice, and freedom. Oh, all of us. Next. Our flag stands for the courage, earnest.